think that there's a real problem in this country with disrespect. I, when I grew up, when I was growing up, people were much more respectful of each other. And I think as this country has grown and gotten larger, there's been a, a real, a real downturn in respect for humankind, one another. And I even see it parent to child. It's not just stranger to stranger, it's, it's husband to wife, friend to friend. There's a, a lack of respect for people's feelings. And when you disrespect somebody, you are, you're, just, you're squashing them. You're, you're, and you're creating an anger, and you're creating ultimately a sadness. And it's just the worst thing you can do to somebody, besides, I suppose, a violent, physically violent act. And um, I think I see it in children. I see a lot of anger. If you go to schools that are uh, underprivileged children, which, which I get to do through Kids Need to Read, I visit schools that have a lot of underprivileged children. And you can see it. You can see it when you talk to them. You can feel their sadness. It's, it comes from a deep place. And it comes from feeling disrespected. I don't think disrespect is always intentional. But I think it's become a part of our our society's being, yes. It's like, it's almost as if they feel a right to disrespect people. When I see parents talking to their children like an army general to a grunt, it infuriates me. I want to go over there <laughs> I want to just tell them, what are you doing? Why did you have a child? Do you want to have a fulfilling relationship with this child? Or do you just want to disrespect them, talk down to them, boss them around? That's not being a parent. It, it, it's, it's, and we lose it in our school. I think our schools have gotten so big that it's, they become institutionalized. And, and there's not that care. There's not that loving care. You're just trying to keep some sort of control in the class. That's right. <laughs> but I, and I tell you, when I, when I was raising my sons, uh, when my, my oldest was two years old, I was in a post office. And a lady turned around to me for no reason. She wasn't reprimanding me. There was nothing happening. My child, we were just standing and waiting. And she said something nice about my child. But she just turned around. And um, she said, don't ever talk down to your child. Talk to them like they're an equal human being. And that was it. And I was like, well, that, I've never had a stranger just turn around and give me parenting advice like that. And so it really stuck with me. It really resonated with me just because it was a stranger telling me this. And uh, she was like an angel to me. <laughs> really, you weren't mad at her? For no, her not at all. <laughs> I, I was fascinated. I was just fascinated that somebody would turn around and just simply say this. And it was almost like a messenger telling me the most important advice I could probably ever be given as a parent. And I, it stuck with me the entire time I was raising my children. Not that I had never failed. It's not that I think that a person can be a perfect parent and never fail and, and never disrespect their child. But you can't apologize if you do. And I taught my children, always own up to yeah. your mistakes and apologize. Parents definitely do not think through the impact that their words can have on the emotional development of their children. And I, I told my children, when they were growing up, I said, I have one rule for you. One, and I started this when they were very young. Children understand things from very, very young. They're not stupid. If you talk to them, if you talk to them, communicate, communicate. You have to, communication is key. And I told them, this, there's one rule. I'm not going to tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. You can do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy, do it. As long as you are not unkind and you do not hurt another human being. And so whenever they did something wrong, I would ask them, who did you hurt? And they would think, they would actually think about it. Who did they hurt? Who did that action hurt? Me? 
them, you know, the brother, you know, by talking ugly or something like that? Does that hurt that person? And I'd make them think about it. I didn't tell them what to do. I would tell them what to think. Think this process out. What are you doing to that person? And they would think they would actually come up with the answer. And then I said, then the second question is, then how are you going to make it right? How are you going to fix what you did to that person? So it was always putting it on them, not on me. I wasn't bossing them. I wasn't preaching to them. I was teaching them how to think and, and equipping them with how to function in society successfully without hurting people. It's just unnecessary to hurt people. It's unnecessary to be disrespectful. It is ne there's never an excuse to be cruel. And so, and if you do, then make it right. They were thinking these processes out on their own. And they have grown up to be very kind, respectful, and friendly human beings. And that's what you want. That's what you want. So think. Think about what you're doing and allow, trust your children to, to be able to do this. That requires a little bit of trust for a parent to do that. When you do that, it, does, it builds their self-esteem because you're giving them responsibility. And um, so, and then they do feel good. It's, it goes back to that feeling good. You're, there is a reward in that, and that you feel good. When you're doing things on your own and you're making good choices, you feel good.